whoopsie, uh-oh, probably the first biggest fuck up of the podcast history just went down. We uh, had a little bit of technical difficulties. So episode 41 is audio only, and I promise it's an absolute banger, but yeah, we lost the video, unfortunately, in production. So I hope you guys uh, will deeply forgive us and enjoy uh, what I consider one of my favorite episodes that we've recorded thus far. Thank you. Enjoy. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy, Michael Ridley, and you're back for episode 41 of Radio Ridley Radio. Today's date is September 4th, and it's 2 p.m. Central Standard Time in the great town of Austin, Texas. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm feeling very productive. Your boy's feeling so damn good. I'm going to tell you right now, folks. Uh, I've, I've been in the house for three days. I've been locked away in the crib for three days. Got them blackout curtains. You already know. You already know the vibes bedridden. I've been bedridden for the last three days. And by bedridden, I mean uh, too depressed to leave the house. <laughs> it's been a pretty good one. Taylor knows exactly what to do when I get in this situation. Leave me the fuck alone <laughs> for like 72 hours, and then I'll miss the world. And then I, I, I'll leave the house, and I'm beaming with joy because I got a little overstimulated. I've been going pretty gosh darn hard lately between roast battles and uh, going to book shows, and I did my first twenty-minute spot at Creek in the Cave, and I just I got I got really overstimulated, and I crashed, I burnt out, so I had to uh, reheal, I had to um, fix myself, and I think I think that was a uh, bro. I think honestly that was pretty good on my behalf. Is like knowing you know you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. <laughs> know when to sleep in your house for three days Cause you're Asian and depressed You gotta know when to hold them Know when to fold them Know when to fuck off for a couple of days Before you make a fool out of yourself in public I was getting nasty Wow Like I was, how? I was just getting snippy Snippy? I had no patience Like, a, Give me a theoretical example Uh, If you heckle during... The if you heckle during the the sink the sacred minute on banana phone, I get real mad. Mm. Well, there was a it's what happened was there was a girl, you know, a very sweet like normie type girl got pulled up there, and she's like twenty no not even fifteen seconds into her minute and she's already getting heckled. I was like, wait for the fucking bell. Right. Well, it it makes me mad because it's like, oh, now you guys all have the courage. The shows the audience has been dead quiet for most of the show. We're late into the show. And now everybody's got the courage to heckle someone since it's like very, uh, since it's a very inexperienced female comedian on stage. And she's trudging through this 60 seconds and she's 15 seconds in and you guys are already interrupting her and fucking up her bit. Like, granted, it wasn't that funny, but still, like, there has to be some kind of fairness amongst all this calamity. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. What'd, you, what'd you do? I just was like, wait for the fucking bell. Wait for the, you hear this? ding a ling a ling a ling Wait for that. All right, Brooke, go ahead and go. <laughs> you just killed the energy. I did. Bit. I destroyed the energy and was like, why? Permanently why? altered the vibe. As Permanently like altering the vibe, as I like to say. Uh, you ever you ever just like, that's how you know you got to stay in the crib. Is it like you, you show up and then the vibe is just permanently altered and you leaving does not do anything. So you might as well stick around. That's that was your boy. I, I don't know. I'm just not too. I'm just. Not too goddamn, uh, not too goddamn proud of who I've been, but you know, I took Marvel on a walk this morning. We did two laps around my whole neighborhood. And if you, thank you, dude. Thank you so much for the applause. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, dude. My dog is 11 years old. That motherfucker could not make it through the walk. I had to drag him the rest of the way. It was getting pretty bad. He's old as shit. I don't know. He stepped in something. My dog stepped in something. He stepped in. I don't know what the fuck. He had a blister on his paw pad, right rear. He had a. He had a blister on his right rear paw pad. And the motherfucker, you know, we had to take him in for service or whatever. Had to call the dog mechanic. Yeah, I know. I put him up on the lift and <laughs> got him sorted out. Yeah, I put him up on the lift. And by lift, I mean I was just kind of holding him while my leg, while my wife uh, put some Neosporin on that sucker, dude. And he's uh, he's doing good. Marvel's all right. Uh, my wife's birthday is this weekend. That was um, uh, I, She's been – here's the thing. My wife knows that I procrastinate. She knows. And she's been she's been planting that seed of uh she's been planting that seed of you're gonna run out of time this year, boy. 
she was whispering, and I can hear whispers in our one bedroom apartment. Are you, you're gonna forget. Don't forget to get against it. Don't forget to get against it. You're procrastinating. You're gonna rush this last minute. I have a knack for uh, procrastinating my wife's birthday gifts until the very last minute, and then having a mental breakdown the day of her birthday, <laughs> which leads to me crying and apologizing profusely. And she's like, it's okay. You do this every year. It's fine. <laughs> you do this every year. I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry. I just, you know, I had so much stuff. I had to do it to comedy and then I had my job and then and trying to I'm find time. Baby. Trying to find time to go to the mall. And I'm sorry. I do that about once a year. And uh, this year is not the case. Your boy fucking nice. went to the god. So is she expecting you to to be like <laughs> procrastinating, and then you're gonna yeah, you're like you got it all done fucking now, fucking dude. I'm about to knock it out of the park. Like hidden, like like the way I feel about these gifts is like when you're playing Super Smash Brothers and you got the baseball bat and you charge up the bat and you see that little star, mm -hmm. that little twinkle where the bat, you know the bat's about to hit them hard as fuck. I know the moment she walks in that door and sees her gift sitting there on the table, that shit's gonna go, ping, and just, yeah. her fucking, her head's gonna go through the fucking ceiling. She's gonna be like, what the fuck? Dude, I went so hard this year, and I'm so grateful. I built her, um, I built her, dude, this is probably the gayest shit I've ever done. She wanted a Halloween boo basket for her birthday. My boo boo wanted a boo basket for her birthday, and I'm so fucking excited. I'm air dropping you the basket now, dude. Cause I'm a I'm gonna tell you right now. I ain't no uh I ain't no uh I ain't no home home goods ass motherfucker, you know. I'm not a very uh I'm not a very romantic guy, you know. If my wife if my wife has done good that week. I might take her to a sit down Pizza Hut. You know? I might, I might, uh, you know, we might be engaged for like uh, six or eight months already at this point. We might go to the Olive Garden. I might grab one of the wine glasses and a fork. I might go ding a ling a ling a ling a ling. I've got an announcement I'd like to make. And I might get down on one knee and propose to her again so that we get free food and wine at the Olive Garden. All right? I'm not, I'm not the most romantic guy. You know, I, I, I would like to give my wife the world, but it costs too goddamn much. <laughs> you know, I'd love to give you the world, baby, but it just costs too damn much. Thanks, Biden. It just, I'm going to tell you right now, once the economy levels out, baby, maybe I could get you the world. But for right now, you're just going to have to learn to mix and match, Napoleon, because we ain't got it like that. I don't know if you, uh, honey, I don't know if you're aware, because I know you're listening to this. I know you're listening to this, and by the time you get this, uh, by the time you get your birthday gift, you have already opened it. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, uh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you right now, I, 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 want, you to, I want you to be, uh, I, want you just, I just want you to be happy. And uh, I know you ain't marry no comedian for the money. <laughs> Is that's what I was trying. I remembered what I was talking about. If you wanted, if you wanted, if you wanted someone with financial responsibility and financial freedom, you would have never left your first fiance. All right. There's a different version of you where you're just getting mediocre penis. <laughs> but you got everything you want in the world. You chose broke guy with jokes and semi-good penis. <laughs> so I'm grateful to have you. I, I want to show you that I appreciate you, and I wish you a happy birthday because this episode comes out on your birthday. So I wanted to tell you happy birthday, and I love you, wife. I got you a boo basket. I sent Taylor a photo. Did you get the photo of the basket? Yeah, I just airdropped it, dude. It I'm going to tell you right now. Put it up right yeah, now? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to break it down for you boys right now. I'm just here to brag because... <clears throat> I told you I'm not a very romantic feller, but I, you know, I took some pennies out of my piggy bank. I had a little bit of money shoveled away. I fucking, dude, Taylor, if you just listen, this took me all morning. I was at the mall at the crack of dawn. I went to the mall. I went to the Barton Creek Mall here in Austin, Texas at the crack of dawn. And by crack of dawn, I mean at opening time. I was, I've been up since 7.30 a.m. this morning. Like I said, uh, it's 2.10 it's 2 p.m. I've been up since 7.30. 
I jogged around the neighborhood with my dog. I fucking, um, you know, I, I, uh, I had me a little energy drink. I had me a ghost energy. Shout out ghost energy. They don't sponsor the show, but God damn it. It'd be awesome if they did. <laughs> God, that was, someday they'll come running. Someday to us. I'll have a energy drinks, dude. If anybody deserves an energy drink sponsor more in the town of Austin, Texas, who else but me? I've been on that energy drink wave. What would the Ridley flavor be? The Ridley fa- uh, Ridley flavor would be rambunctious. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> uh, it would be rambunctious Ridley blue raspberry. That's what it would be. My energy drink flavor would, or it would be, um, it would be uh, M- Manila maniac mango, or uh, or. Uh, or uh <laughs> yeah 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 manila no manila <laughs> like the, the the capital of the philippines oh, sorry. and mangoes is one of our biggest exports mm, i like that all right That's so ma- maniac manila mango would be a fire flavor for me uh what else what other what other guys put in the comments what a michael ridley energy drink would be uh <laughs> ghost energy ghost yeah ghost energy yeah uh fucking Busting with the boys, blue raspberry. Wait, we already did that. <laughs> we already did a blue raspberry. Um, uh, chubby chink cherry. Of course, that would be you know triple triple C C three for short. We would never be allowed to put chink on a fucking uh, chinky sweat cherry. Would be fire. Would be it would just be a picture of me with like a bright red face and on a, a cherry. Stem coming out sweaty. of your head. Yeah, stem coming out of my head. And I'm sweating and I'm going <laughs> chugging the cherry. <laughs> That would be sick. I'm a, dude, I'm a marketing genius, dude. That's yeah. why I'm that's why, you know, I get paid the big bucks to jork it and go crazy. I get paid the big bucks to jork and jelk at my liege. One second while I take a sweet sip of the god's god's nectar. Mm. Big sip from your boy. Big sip from your boy. We just in here cooking for real. I'm just taking my time, making dude, my we're way down the gas right now. Uh, yeah, we're cooking with gas. I would like to cook with you know more, uh, w- with more primitive tools like maybe uh, maybe some shale stone, and I'm rubbing the shale together. I'm rubbing the shale together, creating little sparks. And then there's like you know some. Uh, I have a I have a uh, an array of detritus in a fire pit, and I'm on the, I'm on the I'm on the cliff. <clears throat> I'm on a cliff. Uh, a black stone cliff. It's, everything's dark. It's like shale and, and dark and black. And it's just your boy up there just. Hey, shuk, shuk, oh, 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 that's me right now. I'm just fucking real primitive. But yeah, so I went to the fucking mall. And uh, yo, thank God that, uh, you know, Austin, Texas has a mall that's actually like. Mostly full with the uh, stores that people would actually... We got a Lululemon in that bitch. Hey. Hey. Okay, Austin, Texas Mall. I see you, Barton Creek. I see you with the Lululemon for real. I, I, I see you with the Ruru Ramon. I see the Ruru Ramon. They got a fucking Starbucks in that bitch. You know? What else they got? What else they got in this mall? Dude, they got the motherfucking AMC. Go see a, Go see a movie. Go see a fucking movie, dude. Take your shorty. We got an Apple store in that bitch. Shoe Palace, Foot Locker, Impossible Kicks. We got, bro, they got like seven sneaker stores in that motherfucker. I got some Jordans that are coming. Uh, I got some Jordan. Hey, uh, go to Google. Show them the Jordans I just got, Taylor. Type in uh, Cement cement Gray 3. I just got those, Johnnies. Those are on the way. Uh, um, hopefully they don't get stolen off my fucking porch. Hopefully they don't get stolen off my fucking porch uh, while I'm producing this podcast today, while I'm recording this pod. Let's pray. Guys, uh, put a prayer in the comments. Hopefully Ridley don't get janked. Put that down there. Hopefully hopefully Ridley don't get janked. Hopefully Ridley don't get got. Hopefully Ridley don't get jorked, jelked, or janked all at the same time for my Jordans. Hopefully my Jordans don't get janked. Look at them things. Oh, you couldn't get the... uh, you couldn't get the reimagined white cements? Well, here's a consolation prize. A really nice colorway that people are going to let brick. And honestly, I thought they were going to be hot. So I bought them immediately. I know they're going to hit clearance. But, you know, I just wanted some nice threes. I got, I got two pairs of fours, and I'm going to have two pairs of threes. 
the Jordan 3, shit, I was wearing my Jordan 3s when I fought that dude on 6th Street. You know, that's a lucky shoe for me. I like that silhouette. That's a lucky That's a lucky shoe silhouette. Oh, I did find this from earlier. You were talking about this. Yeah, that's me. You got the sound, you got the sound effect? When my wife walks through the door, dude, when she walks through the door and she sees that basket, she's going to go, I built her a whole basket. She wanted a Halloween. I had it pulled up for her. She wanted a Halloween boo basket. Did you already have it on the screen and you I was did. just looking away? It was just you were talking about something else. Oh, it's yeah. Here. It's here. Well, I went to the, yeah, the mall was good. It was a good, it's a good mall, you know, that, yeah, I went crazy. Look at that. You see that Snoopy? That's a Snoopy right there. Got that Snoopy. You know where I got that Snoopy? I got that Snoopy from the goddamn American Eagle. Oh, okay. I see you with the Snoopy. Yeah, you see me with the Snoopy. So the, th the, the here's the thing. Fellas, I'm going to teach you how to take care of your ladies. Very simple. Very simple. You want to do some romantic shit? You always got to get a candy. Get you a candy. Look, Use the photo as reference. Look at the candy. Okay? Look I symmetrical. Got, I got symmetrical candies, you too. This? You see how symmetrical it so is? Look at bop, the, bop, 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 bop. Brr, brr. Big Reese's up top. Boom! And I got the multiple Reese's. They come in a, to stay. Because we got to stay with a Halloween birthday basket theme here. I went with the... The multi-shaped Reese's. I'm talking bats, Reese's bats, Reese's uh, pumpkins, and you can't forget the Reese's ghosts. <laughs> and that sour on the side. That sour on the side. I had to get her the fruity flavor stuff on the side. Get your bitch some gummy clusters. I don't know a bitch this side of the east, this side of the Mississippi that don't like gummy clusters. All right. Thank God we we're, we're in the West. Thank God for Wonka, dude. Thank God for. Thank God for William Wonka himself. Thank God for all the, thank God for, thank God for all that free labor at the Wonka factory. Them little midgets going to work. You know, I think I think of some. I think of nerds gummy clusters. I picture I picture a I picture a fucking Oompa Loompa, on a on an assembly line, just going, boink, boink, just cranking out the clusters on a conveyor belt, just. Boink. And maybe they're singing a song. Maybe something. maybe they're sing maybe they're singing a song. They're going oompa loompa do ba dee do. If you buy your girl some gummy clusters, she'll give you goo. Oompa <laughs> loompa do ba dee dee. If you buy gummy clusters, then she'll probably suck your d. <laughs> oh, you're shorty. Yeah, she's mad as fuck. We'll buy her some candy in it. It'll surely probably help in some way. But yeah, get your girl chocolate, but also get like some fruity options. And uh, you know, I, I went with the with the trolley with the trolley uh, bright crawlers. You know, gummy worms. Bitches love gummy worms. I ain't never met a I ain't never met a bitch that hated gummy worms. I. Michael, uh, here's a challenge for you, Radio Ridley Radio listeners. Go buy a, a go buy a bag of gummy worms. You see that girl you've been you've been eyeing at the bar? She's a regular at the bar. You're a regular at the bar. She's got like, you know that she's got that strawberry ginger hair. You know, she, and she's she's putting her ear her hair behind her ear as she looks down to sip, you know, a, a little margarita that she got, and she looks up at you like this. She goes, <laughs> she does that. She's putting her hair behind her ear and shit. You're fucking. Your dick flickers with excitement. You guys lock eyes. Your your cock starts pulsing, and you you gotta take you gotta you gotta go back to your breathing exercises. And you go, we can't do this in public. Just like middle school. Just think of your grandma. Think of your grandma's veiny tits. Just think of your grandma's floppy veiny. Okay, there. Oh, why am I getting harder? Why am I getting harder? Fuck. Um. Think of your dad's balls. Oh no, that's not helping. <laughs> you know, and then you just whip out that bag. You whip out that that bag of worms. You whip out that that juicy bag of sour worms. You know, and then luckily, you know she likes those worms. She might, you know, she might take your little sour worm. You know, for a spin at her place. You take them worms to the bar. You go fishing. Yeah, you take them worms. You take them. Yeah, there you go, Taylor. There you go. There you go, my young ward, Taylor. <laughs> You take you, you you might you know you might catch you something you put a you put a gummy <laughs> put a gummy worm on the end of that fishing pole you cast it you know you you say you, you say a prayer you wish upon a star maybe one day you know maybe one day it works and you and you go back to her place and, and you have missionary sex with her in front of all of her 
uh, stuffed animals. <laughs> and it's hard for you to get an erection because you just see all their eyes glistening in the light, staring at your naked body and shit. You got you got a little Kirby plushie looking at your shit. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You got a, you know, she's got, <laughs> she's got uh, Tally from South Park judging your naked body and you can hear Tally's voice. Man, look at that little ass dick. You could fucking, you know what I'm saying? If she's got, you know, and, and then, you know, you get an erection after you man, you, you managed, you muster up an erection after you turn all those, uh, those, stuffed animals away you know because that's that's usually what i do boys i'll turn i'll turn them away because they don't need to see what's about to happen to their mommy you get know? performance anxiety in front i of get performance anxiety that's in front good. of the plushies <laughs> you got like a whole audience you know what i mean of multiple you know intellectual yeah, they, properties they're, they're kind of mean mugging too. yeah yeah i got I, I i i can't get a fucking boner if i have a judgmental squishmallow <laughs> casting judgment upon my fucking flaccid cock what the hell i gotta i have a little I have a little squishy dinosaur baby thing looking at me, laughing at my dick. You know, I give them all voices too. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> He's gonna bust quick. <laughs> Look at that. That's what they all say. They have a little voice in my head. <laughs> yeah, I just got a fucking Furby. Little dick. You just have a fucking Furby. What if you're fucking a chick and you just hear a Furby go, little dick? <laughs> what the fuck? You're. How is it? How did the Furby know to say that? It only can repeat what's said to it. <laughs> oh god dude could you imagine trying to fucking sling some pipe and you just got a fucking heckler you're getting heckled by a furby little cock little cock Waha. nice moves pussy yeah yeah 30 seconds new record huh <laughs> the fuck you're you're piping a shorty you're piping a shorty down you're just <laughs> I can't even I can't even mentally project myself in that situation. You're just fucking imagine she imagine you this is like the girl of your dreams, right? And she's just got fucking she's just got fucking 42 Furbies facing her bedroom, facing her happens best. to be a bit of a collector. Ha, yeah, she just happens to be a little bit, you know, she's a little autistic. That's why she hooked up with you in the first place, doggy. Let's let's not pretend you ain't a let's let's pretend you not Let's not pretend like you you some kind of alpha male. You know what I mean? You're lucky that the gummy worm thing worked. <laughs> I mean, for fuck's sake, this is a hypothetical situation where I put you in, brothers, where you have pulled a cute little autistic baddie at the bar with a bag of trolley gummy worms. It's the R3 Podcast. Hey, guys. This podcast is brought to you by DickLasers.com. It's the first sponsor of the Radio Ridley Radio Podcast, and we're proud to represent this company and... Uh, Yo, they're brilliant. I have a lot of fun with them. It's a simple little laser pointer like this, and it shines wieners, all types. You got, you know, you got a, you got a bent Jonathan. You've got a little uh, skinny, skinny Jonathan. You've got uh, the chode meister, I like to call it. You've got the fucking <laughs> front-facing POV. You're staring at my cock. The front-facing uh, flaccid. Uh, and then you got your standard jabronathan right here. And then, you know, there's up to five dinglings to choose from. You can shine them on your buddy's face. There's nothing funnier than uh, watching a comic at Creek in the Cave chat it up to some girl. And I'm bat signaling uh, the chode meister right on his chest. And he doesn't even know. And the girl he's chatting it up notices, points to it. And by the time he looks down, I've already turned it off. He has no idea where it's coming from. If you guys want to shine laser-pointed wieners on your friends and random people uh, that you meet in the wild, go on over to DickLasers.com and uh, use promo code SWEATY at checkout for 10% off. And uh, if you use that promo code, it'll directly help us here at R3. Yeah, support the pod. Come support the pod. Yeah, get love it. People love it. Oh, yeah, use it with your cat. There's some footage of it uh, on a cat right now. Look, Look at him. He's slapping that tip. <laughs> that pussy hates dingling. Look at that. Look at that pussy cat go. <laughs> Look at that pussy swat that dick. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. He's going to bite it. Oh, he's biting it. Chewing on it. Guys, dicklasers.com. Promo code SWEATY for 10% off at checkout. We love you. Head on over there now and get you one. It's so fun. Enjoy the rest of the show. Enjoy the rest of the show, fucko. You're listening to the R3 podcast. But I digress. Let's go back to the basket. I'm going to break this basket down, dude. I'm so proud of this thing. I I make one for my wife every fucking year, man. So we got the Kinder Joys in there, just two two testicles of Kinder Joy smacked in between that 
fucking Snoopy, that fucking Snoopy dingling right there. I got a Snoopy cock and two, two chocolate balls right there. Kinder Joys, man. It blows my mind that we can't have the normal Kinder Joy where the toy's inside. That we get these gentrified fucking all the kids with peanut allergy, peanut allergies and autism, all the Bradens and Jadens and Braxtons and Jacksons and ate all the fucking toys in the middle. So you gotta. You got to get this fucking bullshit fucking Kinder Joy. Dunkaroo's ass. Dunkaroo ass fucking Kinder Joy <laughs> with a little spoon. You're going to give me a little spoon? Like, that's more chokeable than the toy. How do you eat the toy? Like, only in a, only in America, where a German candy company has to go, Oh, yes, apparently we have to change this design. American, <laughs> Amer- American Kinders eating the candies as well as the toy inside. Yes. Scheiße. Scheiße. <laughs> 14 lawsuits this month. Yes, it's all in the middle of Montana. Yes, 14 children in Montana eat the candy as well as the toy inside. Yes, we have to undergo a complete redesign. Yes, give them a little spoon, yes. And they'll scoop the hazelnut out of the carcass of a <laughs> chocolate egg. Yes. You'll put the toy in the other half. Make it very obvious you're not supposed to eat. Make it extremely obvious the American Americans not very smart. They ruin everything. They ruin everything. They used to put DVDs in the in the cereal. <laughs> Do you remember DVDs in the cereal? P- PC, personal computer game inside the Cheerios. Fred is a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Pajama Sam? <laughs> Fuzzy Macintosh 98? Do you remember? The t- <laughs> it's getting Asian now. <laughs> Do you re- <laughs> Nah, I, I miss those games, though. I yeah. had Putt-Putt. You remember Putt-Putt? putt goes to the zoo was goaded. Putt-Putt goes to the zoo was goaded. I used to speed run that, John. Used to click on them animals. Used to click on the animals. And uh, something I remember, you remember you could you go to the paint shop. Putt putt, at the putt putt goes to the zoo. You could change the color of putt putt, but now I always like that putt putt was a little purple convertible. You know, he's essentially a Miata. Putt putt, he's essentially. Do you guys remember this, bro? Me and my boy putt putt go way back. Me and my boy putt putt. God, you know it's Radio Ridley Radio. It's got to be a little nostalgic, baby. It's got to be a little. Got to be. Got to tickle that nostalgia for you. Putt Putt was a little Miata. Look at him. He's so happy. And Marvel's in the back. Look at Marvel. Oh my God. Dude. That's me and Marvel, dude. Look at that. Hell yeah. Putt Putt goes to the motherfucking dude, zoo. You can get it on fucking smartphones. He, oh man. I, humongous. Incredible. Low key might have to get a Putt Putt tattoo. Low key might have to. He is a Miata. He even has like the little door handle and then. We're saving that. Just saving that. Saving that. that for the thumbnail, the thumb, baby. Thumb. Yo, comment below if you guys remember Putt Putt and Pajama Sam. I only had the demos of Pajama Sam. And then there was another one too. What games were those? What game was that? What what fucking humongous entertainment? That's it. The, yep, the, Freddy Fish. The conch, I had the, the conch shell was the one that came in the cereal. The yes, one. and we played the fuck out of that. Yeah, we played good. the fuck out of that. That's crazy. We were riffing about Kinder Eggs, and now we're well, now we're down. We're talking about humongous entertainment. This one. series of uh, you know PC and Macintosh games that came out in the uh, late '90s, early 2000s. This one, yes, Freddy Fish in the case of the stolen conch shell, dude. I remember that. Not only, um, God, those were those point and click puzzle games, and you used math and you solved math problems and shit. It was a learning tool for sure. Uh, I can tell that the kids nowadays are not growing up with this shit. That shit was like iPad kid shit before it was bad for you. You know? Mm-hmm. That was like you weren't an iPad kid growing up back then. You were a computer kid. And then that being a computer kid in the 90s was like being a valedictorian. You know, being an iPad kid nowadays, iPad kid is just like associated with like low intelligence, low attention span, short, short attention span, low intelligence. If I were a parent, it would all be outside shit. Hey, man, I'm going to teach you how to mow the lawn. And you're going to find satisfaction in labor. <laughs> I'm going to teach you that, you know, labor and output physical productivity equals 
serotonin, reward, happiness, you know? You got to do the gay shit. You got to do the shit you don't want to do. And then I'll give you, you know, some pewter time. You go mow the lawn, I'll give you some pewter time. You know? Go out there, uh, go out there and weed whack. Earn you some, earn you some Call of Duty time with the boys. You know? I don't think we're doing that anymore. I don't think parents are doing that anymore. I think they're just giving them the shit to make them shut up. I think parents are like, yo, how... I wonder what parents are Googling. Hey, how do I get them to shut up? <laughs> hey, he won't, hey, he won't eat. He won't eat healthy stuff. What do I give him? Nuggets? <laughs> I just give him nuggets, right? A few dino nuggets. And a dino nugget. nuggets and some... An iPad? A dino nuggets iPad. Some high fructose corn syrup. You know what? Throw some crinkle fries in there. Throw some crinkle cut fries in the mix. Why the hell not? Why the fuck not? And two shot glasses worth of ketchup for 16 fries. God, man. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Damn, you can get... <clears throat> you the can get, humble bundle. You can get Humongous a- entertainment bundle. $1 for big thinkers, kindergarten, fatty bears. Oh, man, I can't wait to go back. I'm going to download... I'm putting that shit on my PC. I'm going to speed run it all. I'm going to be on Twitch. <laughs> Guys, watch me Watch me play Putt Putt Goes to the Zoo exclusive only here on Twitch. Yeah, we'll I'm put it on the Patreon. Twitch streaming. Yeah, yeah, we're going to play we'll children's. Here. We'll play children's games on the fucking... Yeah, I'm, uh, guys, I'm also considering for the Patreon, we got a, a couple of games that are coming out, and I want to I wanna do gaming series. I want to do a gaming series on Patreon for the boys. I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll do better on YouTube, but I think I do want to make some gaming videos here. I want to do uh, Red uh, Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster Remake. We're, we, oh, me and Taylor are playing that. That'll be like me and Taylor hanging out here, and playing it on the screen, and we'll have like a split screen. We'll both that. get a camera. On yeah, us we'll both have a camera. On. Thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We got a yeah, have a yeah. Capture card. We yeah, yeah. We could totally do that. We got to do it, and we're gonna pass the sticks on a uh, Metal Gear Solid Delta <laughs> Snake Eater Remake. We're gonna get down on that. Me and Taylor are big Snake boys. Love that snake. Love that snake. Otacon. Otacon, jerk me off. <laughs> Otacon, eat my ass. Otacon, I'm in the jungle. Eat my sweaty badus. I've been in the jungle for three days. I haven't washed my ass. Otacon. Otacon. <laughs> my erections lasted over four hours. What should I do? Where's the doctor? Is there a doctor in the house? Because I'm jorking it. <laughs> the fuck? But yeah, dude, just get your own, you know, it's not hard. To maintain a relationship it's not hard to maintain a marriage I, I think once you guys get there if any you know for those for my married viewers you guys already know what it is man sometimes you just got to do something nice put yourself outside of yourself and think of her for once and do it literally bro it's so easy too man it's so easy it don't take women have such everybody guys always think that women have these high expectations of us Oh, if it's not, you know, you got to spend a certain amount of money, or you got to buy this, or it's got to be on this, and the sun's got to be in the right position, or you got to be at this restaurant. No, 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 no. That was the media, man. The media. That was that was rom coms. That was that was movies and television, brother. They just all women need is just a smidge of show them that you listen to what they said. Especially through gifts. Like if your girl's been kind of chatting you up about something, take a mental note of that thing. And you know, and fucking just, or, you know, this is what I like to do with my wife. I'll just be like, hey, can you make a fucking list? And then I can fill in the blanks. I can make sure I have these core things that you need for a gift. But then I can, you know, put put the put the Michael Ridley spin on it. And that's what I did with this basket. I'm so proud of it. Let's go back to that basket. I want to show the boys. We didn't talk about that Snoopy. That Snoopy I got from the American Eagle. We didn't talk about what the Snoopy's hide neither. We oh, didn't yeah, talk yeah. about the goods, the under, goods the, under, under the under the hood. The goods under the hood, dude. You see that moon next to that Snoopy? That moon is like a is like a ring. It's like a it's like a Halloween wreath that you can hang on the door. It's got like fake flowers on it or whatever. It comes in a ring. It, is, it fits the aesthetic of whatever she's got. So if you if you buy her some decor, kind of look around the house. See what she's got going on and try to find, try to use AI. Try to put yourself as like an AI generator. This is what my wife would like based off of everything I've seen in this room. You know, that goes with the, 
the theme of our stuff. We, we, we're doing like a farmhouse Halloween type thing where, it, you know, it's nice, it's, it's festive, but it's not tacky. It's real easy to be tacky around Halloween time when you're decorating the house. Pottery barn level. Pottery barn level, you know, farmhouse, cheek, like white girl shit. You know, it ain't live, laugh, love. It's boo, ga, eek. It's one of, you know what I'm saying? It's, it mixes, you know, it mixes well what she's got. But then that Snoopy, I got it from American Eagle, and it's like a, it's like a snuggly or nuzzly or I don't know what the fuck it is. But basically, you can put that bitch in the microwave and it becomes a heating pad, you know, and that wouldn't be the only time, uh, there would be a dog in the microwave in my household. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that would be the only time a dog's been in my microwave, you know? A lot of missing dogs in my apartment complex. I have no idea where they're ending up, but... Only the microwave size ones. Only the microwavable size ones. Get you a little toy poodle. You put put a toy poodle in a coffee mug, put them in there for two minutes, 30 seconds, you just eat them out the cup, you know? <laughs> that is horrible. That is such a horrible thing. I would never hurt an animal in my entire life. I love animals. I'm a master of dogs. I'm a friend of all dogs. I'm literally it's Caesar Milan. The Asian Caesar Milan. I'm Asian Caesar Milan. I am fucking Caesaru Milanu. I am fucking Caesar S- Mulan. S- I'm Caesar Mulan. I'm fucking <laughs> Caesar Mulan. Thank you, Taylor. Nice assist. Thank you, Taylor. I, 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 I. I eat dogs. I train people to be okay with me eating their dog. <laughs> <laughs> Caesar Mulan. The dog we. The dog. Eater, <laughs> I am the dog eater. <laughs> I I season dogs and bake them, and then I train people to be okay with it. <laughs> it's my culture. How dare you? Oh, I, I I suppose he's right. It is an Asian dish. Yeah, I'll invite. I like to invite. I like to invite white liberals to my house and try to serve them dog. You know, see if they're too polite to say no. <laughs> See if they're too polite to say to decline my offer. Your country's food. Yeah, what the hell? Are you gonna be rude? Yeah, this is cultural. What are you racist? What are you a fucking racist? Eat the dog, bitch. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> genuine <laughs> Rottweiler. Yeah, this is fucking. This is good eating. This is you know. My mama used to say, "Protein is protein," huh? You know, you grow up in the you grow up in the third world Philippines, and there's just a street dog's been hanging out by your house for like a week and a half. He ain't too much of a looker. He looks like he's in pain. Club him in the head and eat him, you know? I don't know where, I don't know how we got here. Oh, because it's Snoopy. But yeah, you can warm up that Snoopy in the microwave. Gets nice and warm. We got the Reese's on top. I got her a throw blanket. She specifically asked for a throw blanket. Um, Luigi's Mansion 2, for some reason, for the Nintendo Switch. It's a, There's a remake. It was a DS game, but they remade it for the Switch. And it, everything that the guy wanted to put into it. Because we already played Luigi's Mansion 3. Now she's doing a Luigi's Mansion 2, and then hopefully they remake Luigi's Mansion for Switch, because that game, you know, it's for kids, <coughs> but uh, it ruled. it's for kids, it ruled. But I'm that shit ha- was kind of spooky. Mm-hmm. You know, I play Resident Evil and shit, I play horror. I play horror survival a lot, and this is Nintendo's approach at a horror survival, and it's for kids... But yo, that shit be getting my ass, dude. A fucking ghost. <laughs> yeah. A fucking ghost be getting me, dude. They got jump scares and that shit. <clears throat> this is my impression of Luigi's Mansion. Uh, Mario. And then he opens the door. <laughs> Every fucking time. <laughs> Mario! <laughs> He's all scared and shit. You can hear his little feet just... <laughs> you play, when you play Luigi's Mansion and you're walking through the you're walking through the mansion and all you hear is his feet just... Hello? <laughs> Those things fucking terrified me, dude. That's about as scary as it gets in our house. <laughs> Those things get me, dude. That's a creepy sound. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I remember that. It's creepy. Oh. Yeah. This rules. <laughs> <laughs> that was me as a ghost. 
<laughs> it's crazy how I can hear a sound and then immediately imitate it. <laughs> That's me. God, those ghosts used to get my ass. You can hit pause on that. Those ghosts, man, they would get my ass. It's so funny. Me and my wife were talking about that. Like, as far as scary games, that's as scary as it gets for her. She's like, in terms of the horror genre, I'm like Resident Evil, Silent Hill, fucking, you know, Dead Rising. Real scary shit. Dead Space. God, Dead Space was terrifying, dude. God, you ever play a fucking game and you you don't want to be in your body anymore? God, that's as scary as it gets for me. That's I, I'll play the scariest fucking games. Yep. And then my wife's like, Ouija's Mansion. <laughs> my shit, my shit. Ouija's Mansion. <laughs> my fucking, my shit is fucking stars. Fucking nemesis. Yeah. My wife's fucking. <laughs> or the Louisiana guys from Resident Evil. Yeah. Seven. What did I tell you, boy? <laughs> I hated those guys. You know, it, what made that Resident Evil 7 uh, so scary was the uh, implication that you were abandoned in a racist's house. You were yeah. abandoned in a racist. What did I tell you about coming here, boy? <laughs> vroom, 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 fucking chainsaw. And, and uh, oh, yeah, within the first, like, 10 minutes of Resident Evil 7, you're, like, locked in the garage or whatever, and then a black cop shows up. And the cop's like, I'm going to get you out of here. And you're like, oh, thank you so much. Oh, they're coming. You need to hurry. And then the moment he makes that, like, don't worry, I got you. And then all of a sudden the cop's head just gets cut in half by that guy. He shoves a fucking shovel through his face, Taylor, and you see it oh. in first person. Do you remember that? Kind of. Do you remember that? We should watch it on the Type Patreon. it in. Type it in. Uh, should we? Yeah, we can see. We'll watch. We can save it for the Patreon. We can save it for the Patreon, guys. We're gonna talk more about. We're gonna talk more about uh, uh, the horror genre of video games on the on the Patreon. But God, that shit used to. That shit used to get me, dude. I used to fuck. Oof, I hated that. I hated that because they all had southern accents and they were all kind of fucking like missing teeth and shit. And God, what a brutal game that was. Fuck, dude. That shit used to fuck me up, cousin. I was looking, trying to see if we could find some, uh... What was that character's name? I don't know. We can Google it next time. Yeah. Let's go back to the basket. All right. So, there is a... Uh, if you zoom out, zoom out a bit. Look at that. And it looks like a pumpkin. I, I didn't intentionally do that. There's a... She's got some Animal Crossing Legos in the back, tucked in the back. But I had to figure out a way to hide it, so I had some, you know, tissue paper. Oh, you haven't given her those yet? I haven't even given No. She doesn't know about those? No, no. I got her some more. Oh. Yeah, so she's, you know, we're nice. built. We got the whole Lego Animal Crossing village at the crib. You know, when you go to an old person's house, you see that ceramic village. Yeah, this is the millennial equivalent of that. <laughs> it's just fucking, <laughs> you know, you go to your Mima's house, and you see, like, a whole village made out of clay and ceramics, <laughs> little kids and shit kissing you know you ever see those you ever see those ceramic uh ceramic statues of of children kissing and we're like sitting on a stoop together holding hands that's legos is essentially the millennial equivalent of that like these yeah yeah you ever see that you ever go into your grandma's house and she's got this shit going on like a whole city <laughs> Now, we ain't got that much Legos, but I'm saying, like, when you walk into my house, you see my Legos, you know, you better pay your respects, you know? Pay your fucking respects, because, um, you know, it says age is eight and up, but it takes two 30-year-olds to put that thing together, me and my wife. We're over here fucking, <laughs> fucking test tubes and beakers, and fucking, we got a particle accelerator. We're fucking doing big shit over here. We got to fucking, <laughs> we got to sep we autistically separate every fucking piece. Everything's color coded by size and shape, and then you start. That's how you Lego. You know, you get you you and your girl. There's another thing. Very simple date. Go drop forty dollars on some Legos, man. You might be getting some pussy. You might be get. Hey, man, you go get your girl a fucking Lego set. You might be clapping some cheeks. You know, but it ain't about that. It's about you know, in that moment, that uh, she's happy as fuck. You know, she gets to spend time with you. And you get that fucking pussy, and then you, <laughs> and then you build Legos and naked. You, and you build Legos naked. You know, you just need a bitch you can build with. You know, find a <laughs> step one. Find a bitch that wants to build an empire with you, preferably out of Legos. <laughs> you know, find you a find you a good girl like that. You know, do what you want. 
you know, do as you please, but please don't touch my Lego. I, 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 we put those together. That's for display only. We're not, we're not supposed to play with them. Don't play with the Lego. Just build it, you know, or, you know, break down an old set. You know, you get, you, I, I could use the space. Get you a little Lego collection going. What else is in there? Luigi's Mansion 2, wrapped up back there. Got her a candle. Oh, yeah, I almost, pff, the fuck? I almost forgot one of the most important parts of a, of a girl's gift basket. Get her a candle. Girl, yo, women love candles. <laughs> women, women love to do that. They love, women have, uh, you know, bitches be having some stinky pussy, but they love a good smelling candle, you know? <laughs> <laughs> might have a, might have a fucked up pH, but that crib smells great. <laughs> Just kidding. She don't have that. But women love, uh, they love a candle. I got her a white pumpkin candle from the Bath and Body Works. That was outlined in the list of must-have ingredients for this Halloween birthday basket. And then um, there's a, a throw pillow. She wanted a throw pillow. Here's the uh, piece de la resistance. I got her a throw pillow from Target. $10 throw pillow. Throw blanket. Throw blanket. Throw blanket from fucking Target. It comes wrapped up in a tube shape already. It's already rolled up with a strap and then the label. But in the core of that blanket, there is a brand new Apple Watch. Just chilling in there, dude. Just shoved in there. Shoved in there like a little like a little throw blanket throw blanket watch lumpia. Like it's like a little egg roll. Little egg roll of gift. You know, she's gonna be like, oh my god, the blanket. The blanket. You got to also think of the disassembly of the gift. You know, you got to sneak in shit. I would have been an awesome dad. Mm-hmm. I would have been a great dad, dude. I would have been a good Santa Claus, you know? I'm pretty sure, like, I'm pretty sure at, like, one point in my life I was Santa Claus, you know? Like a little, <laughs> like a little. Filipino <laughs> <laughs> Santa Claus. Leave some lumpia. <laughs> Leave some lumpia on the... <laughs> Fireplace. <laughs> hey, the Filipino, uh, Filipino Santa Claus doesn't give you coal. He just pulls up to your house and fucking beats the shit out of you. <laughs> You're being bad boy, huh? <laughs> I see you next year, mother You've been bad all year. Huh? You've been, you've been fucking asshole all year, huh? <laughs> I'm Filipino Santa Claus. Do not fuck with me, huh? I, I know when you're sleeping. I know when you're awaking. I know when you're being good, but I especially know when you're being bad, huh? So smart, you sip, huh? I beat the shit out of you, huh? Instead of ho ho ho, it's it's ha ha ha. <laughs> I beat your ass, huh? <laughs> Filipino Santa Claus. What, what would the reindeer be named? Uh, reindeer would uh, <laughs> reindeer be Joel. <laughs> Joel. Uh, Pipi. <laughs> Pupu. <laughs> how many? How many reindeer are there? Dasher, prancer, dancer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, gay boy. That's gay boy. <laughs> Bright red nose, right up front, he gay boy. Very fast. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's Titi. <laughs> Titi is short for Dick. That's his name, Dick. <laughs> Titi man, this is uh, Pupu, and this one is Pipi. This one is date rapist. This one is <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, sorry, Tito. That's uh, that's 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 Tito Bill. <laughs> Tito Bill. <laughs> Tito Bill. Uh, we got <laughs> who else? We got we got fucking. <laughs> This is Charlie Man. Charlie Man. I'm trying to think of what. <laughs> and of course, uh, Rudolfo. <laughs> Rudo- <Yeah>. Rudolfo. <laughs> Rudolfo Gomez. <laughs> I was trying to think of our land, our uh, our our apartment complex guy from the at the last one of the last episodes that was complaining at mm. the apartment complex. I forget what his name was. Mm. Phil or something. There's yeah, always, this is. So there has to be one regular English name. And then this regular. one, is, and then this one's Robert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Robert the reindeer. <laughs> Filipino Santa. I'm coming to your house. I'm watching you every time. I'm watching when you touch your titi. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm watching when you're yelling at your mom. I'm watching all the time. And I come every year to beat your fucking ass, huh? <laughs> beat your butt. I beat your butt, huh? <laughs> In front of your whole family, so everybody knows. <laughs> Robert the Red Nose Ranger. And your parents will let me do it, too. That's why. <laughs> all over the world, all year long. You'll be like, you don't want me to tell Filipino Santa Claus, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Filipino Santa Claus is like actually fixes the problem with children. No iPad. <laughs> Hard labor. 
We're picking up the pine cones. <laughs> There's 4,000 pine cones in the backyard. Go pick them all up or I'm beating your ass. Just a fucking monotonous task that's in- incompletable. <laughs> Just incompletable monotonous tasks or I beat your ass. But yeah, dude. Um, basically, like, you know. It just takes a little bit of effort, man. And my girl, you know, she's... This episode is dedicated to her. Um, You know, she works her day job. She works at... uh, You know, she'd be at the mothership late at night. And, you know, um, my comedy career and this show would not be possible without her. You know, she's a vital part of my life. And uh, I, I can't picture my life being any other way. You know, I, there's multiple avenues I could go down. People always like to, you you know, I feel like as human beings, we like to fantasize about alternate realities or whatever, you know, and I had a lot of bad things happen to me in this life. But there was one good thing that I think was worth it, and it was meeting that lady. And if you ask me, oh, if you go back in time and change anything, I'm like, oh, fuck that, dude, because I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if I touched anything. I've seen the butterfly effect, you know. I don't need to... I don't need to be Ashton Kutcher with no arms. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to wake up and. <laughs> dude, that movie used to fuck me up. Was that dude. A, I don't remember that. It, I think that was the director's cut. Uh, was yeah in the one dire- of the times he wakes up. Mm-hmm. One, one of the, of the times Ashton Kutcher wakes up, he doesn't have arms. It's the uh, he goes back in time, and he stops them from putting the dynamite in the mailbox. You know? Do you remember that scene yeah, from Butterfly Effect? Yeah. They put the dynamite in the mailbox. And then they're like, oh, you know, they're they're all in middle school. There's a bunch of uh, Ashton Kutcher's in middle school with all his middle school friends. Like, oh, dude, we put a fucking stick of, dude, we put a stick of dynamite inside the fucking mailbox, dude. Look what it's about. You're, I'm, I'm Bam Margera. This is putting a stick of dynamite in my neighbor's mailbox. <laughs> and then the fucking lady comes out of her house, and you're like, oh no, she's about to check the mail. And then she turns. Oh my God, she's got a baby in her arm. And that fuse is going away. By the time she opens that mailbox, boom, baby's dead. It's implied, you know? And they had a fucking, you know, cuts to the ambulance being outside the house and then cuts to the kids like, oh, my God, what the fuck did we just do? What the fuck? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. One of the alternate uh, realities, one of the deleted scenes is Ashton runs to the mailbox, pushes her out of the way, and puts his hands over it, and then he wakes up from that reality with his fucking elbows, <laughs> like fully a grown, fully grown adult, twenty-something year old Ashton Kutcher in college now, and he's like, Ugh. <laughs> and his fucking arms are blown off. I got it. Yeah, just like that, <laughs> dude. You found it. What a champ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten things that make no sense about the butterfly effect. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. The whole movie is like him going back in time and trying to create the perfect reality. But the whole message of the story, the whole message of the movie is shit was fine the way it was. You know? And sometimes you might try to like re rework it, bruh. But it's you try you might try to rework it, brother, but it's fucking God's plan, dude. You know, I was supposed to lose my mom. I was supposed to I was supposed to go through all this rough shit cuz like my problems from 10 years ago aren't my problems today and things are going to get better with time if you just keep if you find your thing and pour energy into it the whole world will unravel unravel before you and you'll and you'll and you'll see God at work you know you understand and I understand God better than ever now from looking into the past, you kind of understand. In the moment, you're like, why is all this shit happening to me? I don't understand this. God dang it, Bobby. What the hell's going on? Boy. And then you're, you know, you're 10 years down the line. You look back and you go, oh, sick, yeah. You're 15 years down the line. You go, oh, yeah. If my mom never died, I'd be a fucking fat piece of shit not doing nothing with my life. She would have cradled me for the rest of my life. I would have never evolved into the man that I am now. I'd still be in Virginia. I'd still be in Virginia, probably still playing Yu-Gi-Oh, to be honest. I would be in the crib playing Yu-Gi-Oh with my autistic brother. You know, there's a butterfly effect version of my life where me and my brother are both, you know, 40 years old and overweight, and she pays all our bills, and we're literally just children. Just fat, blubbering children. iPad kids at 40, you know. And then Mama passed away, and I had to grow up quick. You know, I read something recently that said it really resonated with me. It said uh, a boy becomes a man when he 
realizes no one's coming to save him. And when I went to jail, when my mom died, I, I, I fucked around with drugs for a little bit, and then I ended up going to jail. And then I was homeless, and I was walking around, you know, downtown Newport News, homeless as fuck. Newport News, Virginia, very rough town, my listeners know. And I was like, damn, dude, nobody's going to come save my ass. Damn, dude, I'm a fucking kid. I got to fucking figure out how to provide for myself. And I did. I found comedy, and then I got job, shitty job after shitty job, and everything just kind of started getting better with each year. Each year that passed, every time I would upgrade my life a little bit more. We were sleeping on the floor with a couple of mattresses. Boom, now we got a bed and a bed frame. Boom, then we, we had a television on top of a Sterilite Tupper made, Tupper Rubbermaid container. Boom, now we got a whole fucking TV center, the entertainment center. We got it all. You, you know what I mean? I was fucking filling out job applications on a fucking Samsung note four now i got a whole computer and keyboard and you know things slowly get better with time if you just keep pouring the energy and you have the right intention and i don't think i'll change anything i can confidently say i'm grateful with this reality that we live in i can say i'm grateful for all this shit you know happy birthday chelsea thank you for listening to radio ridley radio